So when Crossing Borders first started, it wasn't re there wasn't really a sense of team. It was just kind of like individual projects started by students that Lynn Schultz helped to facilitate. Um, but then um, as more projects, I guess, were developed in like a presentation type styles, like using the arts, the idea of a touring team kind of came about. Um, and then they tried touring like a few of the pieces and then um, the audience was just so overwhelmingly positive that they decided to really just take the show on the road. The main thing is accidental, intentional um, coming together of kids who normally wouldn't come together. And the best way to do that is have some kind of common project. So you have some Canadian born kids and some newcomer kids and you have a project you want them to do and, and but you almost force it but in a um, an appealing way. Hijab on, hijab off. Niqab, might as well be niqab, given the nonsense you spread in the media. If I kill someone, I'm a crazy madman. If I kill someone, I'm a terrorist. Same crime, different frame. To, to what aim? To divide, to terrify, to vilify, for political gain, to paralyze, to make it rain, for money, power, who risk? Are we really going to fall for this? When refugees come here, they they feel like they are disabled because they're always receiving help from others. They feel like they don't have anything to give. So what we always tell them is, even though you don't speak English, you can still speak in Arabic. And if people are teaching you English, you can teach them Arabic. So what you have is, is not less than what others have. Abdul Rahman um, and Ahmed are um, two kids. They're, they're, new Syri new ki they're students from Syria, recently arrived. They're, they've been here less than a year. Um, they have a lot big gaps in education, so school's not going great for them yet, which is typical for newcomers who have had a lot of relocation and so struggling through war and everything. So somehow we found that Abdul was a fantastic singer. <laughs> Kid, he won't answer questions in class. He, he, his story is that he relocated to Turkey and it took him a long time to make friends there but he made really good buddies there and he thought he was never moving again. And then his parents moved him to Canada which is in the long run will probably be better for him but he doesn't get that yet. He's 14. And he's angry and in class he's shut down. Uh, he doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to try. He's a smart guy and right now we just have to love him until he's okay and ready to try. But we found out that he could sing. So whatever spirit is shut down in the classroom, the essence of him comes alive on that stage. And so we drag him out of class and take him on the road and that maybe gives him enough to keep him going until maybe he can start to like this place called Canada. And his buddy Ahmed is the same, but he plays the tabla. So um, I've always been a believer that you shine a light on what kids can do instead of what they can't do. The first uh, thing I did for Crossing Borders was just to watch it. And they asked me to just come on stage and introduce myself. I remember I was so nervous. I couldn't even say the word crossing borders. It just wouldn't come out. The huge challenge is confidence because they're not hearing the language and they're shutting down. So they find links within their cultures. And that's a huge comfort so that they can speak their own language with their friends. So we have different places they can meet. We do a speak English cafe and they can come in in their groups, but then they speak English at lunch once a week. Um, depression is hard for them, their background stories are hard and the more you learn about them the more you learn their background on their religion to know the different dynamics and cultures and traditions it helps within the classroom and and every year I learn every student I learn it's so they're, they're dynamic kids. First to write a spoken word you need to uh, first think about like an issue that we, you'd like to uh, talk about and uh, raise awareness about. So it depends if it hits you, uh, like an issue comes to your mind, you can just start writing. What are you? We're human citizens, students, friends, daughters, sons, sisters, brothers, bubble tea chuckers, we're not all this stuff, Starbucks lovers. <laughs> but by that confused look on your face, this wasn't the answer you were looking for when you asked, what are you?
Well, the kids would say one of the main reasons they love doing crossing borders, the newcomers especially, is that they want to tell the truth about their country, how beautiful it was, how normal their life was, and how they're just like anybody. When I joined Crossing Borders, um, at first I was just watching, just like um, my friends, and then I, they told me that if I wanted to perform something, and we started uh, singing the song Better Place, and I realized how Canada actually, uh, it's a better place for me. So Mona speaks of um, having to le run away from Syria because of the war and then moving to Jordan where as refugees they weren't accepted. And so you leave a terrible place, not a, a terrible situation, thinking that you're going to a safe place and then um, you are marginalized because you are other. And she thought, you know, they don't, they hate us here. So even the, the place of refuge was not a place of refuge. Uh, before the war, like, I like, um, had a simple life and cool life. I go with my friends to my school and I will like, I'm always be happy in my, in Syria. And be after, like when happening the war, like, it's so sad. في تلك اللحظة أخبر جنود أمي بأنه يجب علينا البقاء في المنزل. كنا خائفين جدا لبقية اليوم. لم نستطع النوم بسبب صوت القذائف. So before she came to Canada, she thought, uh oh, is it going to be like that again? And what a relief to her when she came here and she said, you know, people don't judge me here for who I, what I, what I wear, what I believe. I am accepted here. It is a better place here. I started when I came the, to the school and missions and had a meeting with the Syrian people and they are told us we are present. Syrian peace and we practice and then I start it and I love it. The program attracts different kids and we sometimes, it sometimes doesn't attract. We just sort of tell them, try this, you're coming and then you'll like it. When I see people crying, it's not like even when they tear up, it makes me feel like I I I like I explained my 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 idea in a good way. People understand my my point, and that that just cheers me up. We also have audiences who are really great. They come to us after. They thank us. They we always hear people saying you you've opened our eyes, minds, and hearts. Where people because people don't really know how it feels to be a refugee. When they get to tell their story when they get the, to tell it to the world that they're, they're kids. They just want to be kids. And this is what happened to them, and not to blame them for everything. That they just want to continue in life, because their parents have done a ton to get them here. So now they've got these pressures from their parents too, and they want to succeed in Canada. And they want to become Canadian, and they love it here. And some of them want to go back and help rebuild their countries because they've seen so much destruction. But it's hard when they get and text in this social media thing and they hear that a friend had died and you don't know that right away they don't tell you and you find out why they're so down you know and, and you, you, there's a whole integration part of that to help them feel comfortable here to tell us so we can help them through it and the crossing borders has been a huge link that the kids can come in they, they all feel welcome from anywhere in the world they can come into that classroom we're going to talk about who are the Kurdish people and we're gonna a little bit talk about our story, how we left Syria and we came like to Turkey after then to Canada. And yeah, we're gonna like share, I, I wanted to share my story to the people, like when we say we are from Syria, they thought we are Arabic, but we are Kurdish from Syria. I wanted they know to know who are the Kurdish people and yeah. Some of us are Arabian, some of us are Some of us are Shia. Some of us are Kurdish. We are all Syrian. 
I'm really proud to see like crossing borders like had actually went through way off the top. Like they won an award today. Like it's really amazing. Like how just like small ideas can build up into like such a big and useful thing and meaningful things to all the communities and like all the newcomers from like Syria, everyone to be involved. Your came here as a newcomer, I found crossing borders and it was really a life-changing experience for me. I didn't like school, I was skipping all of my classes, but when I got involved in crossing borders, I, I became a different person. And I always say, I don't want to credit all, all of it to crossing borders, but mostly I'm a university student now because of crossing borders, because it helped me really have a goal and, and work hard for it. So when I got that chance, I want all newcomers to have the same opportunity that I had when I came to be successful. I looked at things in certain ways. It sh things should be done this way, people should be this way. But as I, was, as I met more people, different, people from different countries, I was more open to how that things are not just black and white. I think every part of the program is transferable, but with... Um, careful conversations about the nuances of whatever school is involved. It really comes down to uh, inspirational teachers, inspirational uh, students, and uh, the, the confluence of that, of bringing them together. And once you bring them together, they can't be stopped. So you put in 10 inspirational people together, a little bit of leadership from the teacher side, and you'll be blown away by what can happen in your community. That's my message to everyone. We're sharing the know-how why this program is important and why other schools across Canada can do this program. And it's absolutely crucial. And I'm not saying there aren't any more different types of programs out there, but one thing I've seen today with the warmth that you've shown us that this program is one of a kind, absolutely one of a kind. And you should all applaud yourselves for that. Everyone Yeah, allow a kid to get on the stage and and have the same airtime as the typical leader kids that are usually on the stage, and and um, normalize them. That's the biggest thing. Um, and and the thing about crossing borders is even though we are focused on newcomer and refugee issues, or, sorry, newcomer issues, refugees, immigrants, and international students, we also believe that it's a model that could work for um, LGBTQ socioeconomic, aboriginal, because it's all about just breaking down barriers one story at a time.